Hi, friends. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Dateable Podcast. We are so happy to have you all back. And if you're a brand new listener, welcome. You started in a really good place. (laughs) This is a really good place. I feel like this episode we have been trying to make happen for months. We are so mm-hmm. excited to have Pharaoh Kyle with us talking about no other than toxic relationships. I feel like that in <laughs> itself is a hot topic. <laughs> I think everyone's ears just perked up. Toxic relationships yep. <laughs> sounds familiar. I would go and bet that most of our listeners have encountered a toxic relationship at one point in their lives. And maybe it's not even in your own dating life, but you've certainly witnessed toxic relationships, maybe in the workforce with the parents or the family or friends or neighbors. And all of that, even if you were not part of a toxic relationship, it all compounds its influence on you and how you view Mm -hmm. relationships. So this is why this episode is important for anybody who's ever opened their eyes up to relationships. You know, when we started the conversation, I was like, you know, I don't think I've been in that many toxic relationships, maybe a situationship, friends with benefits, but not a relationship. But as we were talking with him about the definition, Mm -hmm. it made me be like, okay, actually, maybe I have been in a toxic relationship. And I think like the whole aspect of not basically someone not being able to meet you where you are, and realizing that this is kind of a dead end situation. By definition, you know, obviously, there's a clear range of what a toxic relationship could mean. And we definitely don't want to discount something that like stems on the side of physical and verbal abuse. Like that's definitely at the top side of a toxic relationship. But when we open the definition up, it really was anything that wasn't meeting your needs, anything Mm -hmm. that like felt like you were kind of pushing when the other person was pulling that that is eye opening to me that, you know, looking back on it that way, you can say like, actually, my needs weren't getting met and I wasn't in the right type of relationship. This brings up this thought I had over the weekend, and it's it's about time travel, but stay with me. It has it is relevant oh to this. Okay. <laughs> if your future self was able to time travel back to the present day and said, Julie, your relationship now is gonna end up toxic. Mm. What would you do if your future self came back to warn you? Well, I would probably ask in what way I'd want to know Mm -hmm. more information before doing anything because, you know, clearly there's some situations where it's just a toxic person that's infiltrating that, you know, there's really not much you can do outside of just choose better and not be with that type of person. But sometimes toxic situations, it takes two to tango. So I'd want to know, like, what is it that's making it toxic? And is this something that I could come out of? with working with a partner or not. And, you know, I think like that would probably be the info I'd need. But if it was like a pure definition of toxic in the sense that the other person was unwilling to work with you, essentially, then I would probably cut bait because I feel like I've wasted too many to- too much time in my life being in situations that didn't serve me. And you know, I think that's so important in finding your person ultimately is putting yourself first a little with this and looking at like, how am I contributing? How am I showing up for that? Mm -hmm. What would you do? Right. And I I think I would lean in even more into that relationship. I mean, Mm. you really just have two choices. One is lean in and the other one's lean out and start looking for your next person. Quiet, quit (laughs) that relationship. (laughs) But I think I would lean in more because I want to know if this relationship ends up toxic, is it in my control? Did I contribute to it, like you were saying? And also, what am I going to learn from this? So I think it would make me more cautious of everything that's going on in the relationship and more intentional about my actions moving forward. I actually think it would help my current relationship. I could see that. Again, it's hard because it's just like, what is the range of toxicity that we're talking here? Yeah. 
You know, like, yeah. I think that really is the crux of why I would either cut bait or lead in. And that's, like, hard to know in this hypothetical without knowing the situation. Yeah. And maybe your future self only had <laughs> two seconds to come and warn you, and then they disappear, and they can't answer any clarifying questions. But now you're you're equipped with this information, and it's up to you how you act upon it. I, you know, I often think about that. If you get a new piece of information that could change the course of your relationship, how would you act upon it? Well, that's why it's kind of nice not knowing that information because, you know, know, even if we've been in toxic situations, the hope here with this episode and just bringing the topic to light in general is not to continue down the path of more toxic relationships, but using it as a time to stop and reflect and not keep repeating the same patterns. And, you know, looking back at what I would now describe as my toxic relationship, even though at the time I didn't feel that way. You didn't think so. Is that it's, it's, yeah, but like it set me up for current day, you know, like there were situations in the sense that I wasn't getting what I wanted from the relationship and it made me pass on people that were kind of that same up and down, uh, you know, like the roller coaster type relationship, like that wasn't appealing to me anymore. And I think if I hadn't gone through something like that, then I maybe wouldn't have known and I would have wouldn't have been able to hone in on that person with qualities that actually don't make a toxic relationship. So I feel like you do learn from everything. And for that, I wouldn't want to skip to the end. That's right. I mean, you have to learn as a kid why you don't cross the street when there's traffic. If someone just told you hypothetically, you're not going to really experience it. We all do things by experiencing and then we learn by going through it, right? So it makes mm -hmm. sense that in hindsight, you can say it was a toxic relationship, but while you're going through it, you don't know yet. There's, there's, yeah. no, there's no vocabulary around what you're feeling yet. But when you do get into a toxic relationship and you want to get out, what is the opposite of it? You detox. And this is how I'm going to transition into your upcoming vacation, Julie, uh, because I'm so <laughs> I'm so looking forward to living vicariously through you that I took a long shower before this recording and I'm legit in a bathrobe because I just wanted to melt into this conversation. <laughs> I needed to detox. So I'm so excited for you to go on vacation. I am also. I am in <laughs> such a need of a detox. Like, I can't even explain it. So for all our listeners, I am headed to Hawaii on, for six days. So it's not like super long, but, you know, close to a week, which is really nice. And it's like... the first real big trip I've done with my partner. Like, we've gone mm -hmm. to like weekend trips, but it's only been like a night or we've gone away a couple nights. Um, we went to Austin for a wedding, but that doesn't really count. And, you know, like we were also like yeah. staying with my best friend. So I feel like there's like, this is like the first like more substantial trip we've taken that's for pure joy, like no reason for us going outside of just yep. wanting to vacation. So yeah. very much looking forward to it. Cannot wait to just be at a beach, be at a pool in nice weather. That's all I want. And you chose Kauai. Yes, I was like Kauai. Kauai. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was trying to say like, Kalua. <laughs> um, yeah, we're know. going to Kalua, the new we're island in Hawaii. Yes. Have you heard of it? Yeah. Yes, yes. You just drink the water and you get drunk. It's great. Exactly. That's the best island. <laughs> so, what made you choose Kauai? You know, I have only been to Kauai one time, and it was back in the day. I, probably no one will believe this, but I used to be quite the half marathon runner. And I did a half marathon with Team in Training, which raises money for Leukemia and Lymphoma mm -hmm. Society. I did the Nike Women's Half Marathon in San Francisco. And I did really well in fundraising because, like, the company I worked with matched donations. And. Oh. The person like on my team, like the lead, like had leukemia himself. So he donated a ton of money. So anyways, they were basically like, if you raise like $600 more, which was like 300 because of the match, you can go to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So I went to <laughs> Kauai with that trip, with that organization. Um, 
But I mean, it wasn't like a trip I planned and, you know, I was mm-hmm. running a race during it. So it, f- it was one of the islands that we both hadn't really visited on a trip outside of this that doesn't really count. And, mm-hmm. you know, I do remember, though, when I was there, it was just the natural beauty of that specific island was incredible. So, you know, <laughs> when I went to I went to Maui was like the last vacation I ever took in 2017 which is insane oh I mean, I've my been away, but it's always like for something right and it's funny because uh my i went with my best friend and her friend had moved there and she's like guys it's maui midnight and it was like 9 p.m and i remember <laughs> from Kauai, like it shut down at like 6 p.m so it's gonna be <laughs> even you know it's like Oahu is like the happening island, and then Maui's kind of in the middle. But we're going, you know, we're going straight A-A-R-P up AARP island. We'll... Exactly, exactly. So definitely look looking forward to a detox. That's for damn sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's like the one thing you're most looking forward to of the list that you just gave us? Ooh, you know, we. We found a hike. Well, I mean, it's like a very well-known hike. I'm like, we found a hike. It's like the most, (laughs) it's like the most beautiful hike in the U.S. (laughs) It wasn't a secret, but on the Nepali coast. So we booked like the shuttle for that yesterday and Mm. really looking forward to that. And Hanalei Bay is on the North Shore. So you go there first, then you get on the shuttle that we're going to go back and spend the day there. So yeah, I think that's probably that day specifically I'm looking forward to. But honestly, all of it, even just like doing mm-hmm. nothing when we first arrive and sitting out there is going to be incredible. Cannot wait. <laughs> it's like the moment before going yes. to the airport. You just go, yeah, oh. this is happening. Yeah. We're going. <laughs> yep. We are doing it. We're doing it. But, you know, I think couples trips are... I'm not like nervous because we've been together a year and a half and I feel like, you know, maybe we would have taken a trip earlier if it wasn't for COVID too. I think that was definitely like changed the whole trajectory of timelines for us a lot, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's not, you know, it's not like it's, it's definitely, well, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. (laughs) Like it's, (laughs) it's still like a step, right? It's still like something that's like more of not, maybe not a step isn't the right word, but it's definitely, you know, that part of your relationship, like we took a big trip together. Yeah. That feels kind of nice. You're creating new experiences together, which brings you closer and intensifies the relationship. So it's still a major step in any relationship. Yeah, yeah. It was really, like, fun the other night, for instance. Like, we just hit our year and a half, and, like, over the Ooh. weekend, we are trying to remember, like, every month, like, what's the one thing that kind of, like, stood out memory-wise. Aww. And, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot, which is good. I had a party this weekend um, yes. for Fleet Week, and I did invite you a significant other. <laughs> he, I forwarded it to him. Like, feel free to go. You know, no one could see the Blue Angels anyways. Every year in San Francisco, there's like an air show for the Blue Angels that um, I think that's everywhere, but it's like a big thing here because it's just an excuse for people to party pretty much. Yeah. And people like go out to the rooftops. <laughs> I'm like, why are we doing this? Yeah, it's cool, but it's like 15 minutes of like, you know, it's kind of military infused too, which I'm mixed on, but it's still fun. It's something that's always been like part of SF culture and mm-hmm. um yeah, we did it. We had a party this year. I'm bringing this back because, like, one of my friends was like, you guys do so much. And I'm like, this is definitely the Instagram versus reality trap, right? <laughs> of, like, you know, this, like, she's like, you guys do so many activities and you're always out and about doing stuff. And I'm like, are we? Like, we go out, like, maybe once a week, you know, doing <laughs> something. But, you know, still still nice to hear. But anyways, it was so foggy. You could not see a thing. Oh, no. But I was able you heard to them. connect with one. Of, we did. Oh, it's kind of creepy, actually. It's like you heard them like coming right over your head, but then you <gasps> couldn't see them because of the fog. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it. I'm kind of bringing this full circle. But, you know, one of our friends that actually introduced UA and I, we were talking mm. about it. She she came to the party and she was like, still the best match I ever made because she was formerly a matchmaker. <laughs> and 
<laughs> but she was talking about, you know, like a really toxic relationship that she had been through recently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously you don't wish that upon anyone in any way. But I feel like the amount of maturity and growth, like I saw within her, mm. you know, we talk about this in this episode too. It's like sometimes you do have to like kind of be in that situation that makes you question things and like really start to evaluate what is it that you want and who you're going to become. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's such a growth opportunity if you choose to see it that way. And I know some of us try to, we envy other people who externally we feel like, I wish I had their life. They have it so easy. You know, things just get handed right. to them and they don't have to work that hard to be in a relationship at all. Well, guess what? Nobody is in a in an easy relationship and nobody's having an easy time dating, but we're all building character along the way. So the grass is not greener. And if your grass is not that green and you acknowledge that, you're learning from it. Your grass is still growing. As long as you're not stepping <laughs> on your grass and killing your grass, your grass is still growing. And that's that's what matters. So next time you're in a toxic relationship, just remember your grass is still growing. That's all you need to remember. Yeah. It doesn't need to be green. As long as it's still alive. It could be yellow. No big deal. No big <laughs> deal. Yellow's pretty. <laughs> Yeah, it is funny, though, because my other friend that came to the party, I was like, I have an episode for you. You got to listen to this, <laughs> this episode. And I'm like, I don't know why. I just like when I was like listening to it back, I'm like, I feel like she's going to just really get a lot out of this. Oh. Just where she is in her current life. And I looked at Pharaoh's Instagram. And the only three people I had in common following him was you, UA our mm-hmm. dateable account and then her ironically and her and she like did it yeah and i was like look she's like, i'm like oh the person i told you about you're already following and she's like i feel like you know me really well and i'm like yeah so. <laughs> and it's creepy <laughs> <laughs> announcements before we get into it with pharaoh 22 day dating app challenge spots Ooh. are going quickly we are well underway we're about to hit You know, we're getting closer and closer to Halloween, and that is also the end of registration, but also the start of the busy season. It sounds like taxes, right? Like the busy season? It's the busy (laughs) season of dating. (laughs) Just call us your dating accountants. (laughs) Yeah, that should be our new tagline. If you want to make the most of the season, visit findingyourperson.com slash apps and sign up for the 22-day dating app challenge and... We'll also be reviewing your profile. So honestly, it's just a win-win situation. Get on board. 